Crime still raging in Democrat-run New York City, despite liberal leaders sending in a military unit. A woman losing both of her feet after her boyfriend pushed her onto the subway tracks and into the path of an oncoming train. It's a pretty shocking development, given that Governor Kathy Hochul's flooded the zone with a thousand troops and police officers to do bag checks on Granny. Hochul also pulling back the big guns in her subway safety surge, banning the soldiers from using military-grade rifles while doing the checks. But the liberal media says this whole crime thing, just a ratings play anyways. They just made it into a ratings thing. They just kept saying this and it's I think just that's not true, true. But I also think there was a carjacking on my street. We talk about carjackings as if like, oh, well, it's not murder. Nobody likes to have a gun put in their face and their car stolen. DC did, and DC in particular did have its highest homicide rate in 26 years in 2023. There's been, I think, a slight improvement. We're only DC is an outlier, but yes. Um, and we just had the, the DC Attorney General say you can't prosecute or arrest your way out of this carjacking problem. Well, I think you can actually. So Dana, uh, I don't think the Kathy Hochul surge into the subway system is having the desired effect. As we destroyed Harold with last week, um, some of the, the criminals that you're worried about aren't carrying bags. Those aren't the ones you're concerned about. And putting the National Guard in there is just papering over the problem, which is the prosecution and re, uh, repeat offenders. Did you see that Chicago, the transit union there, is now asking for the National Guard to come in and help them? It's like, what are we doing with all of this expense? The National Guard is not meant to do this kind of work. The prosecutors are meant to do their job, and the transit workers are supposed to do their job, and the police are supposed to do their job. The National Guard is, is in a terrible position there. Do they know all the certain rules, and how many tools are they going to take away from them in order to actually do the job they've been asked to do? I think it's horrible, and it's not going to work. We're militarizing the subway, but not the border. Greg Gutfeld. Yeah, and, and the banning of the rifles is not a practical decision. It's an optics decision. That's always the case. Here is the opportunity cost of the George Floyd moment. We have sacrificed all sound policing and prosecution for a TSA-styled police state where the ladies get their bag checked, but they lose their limbs later. Mm -hmm. They cannot profile criminals, mm -hmm. and they cannot maintain a police presence because... Well, there aren't any per per police at all. They're either retired or they've left the job. And, you know, no one is going to be no one's going to accept recruitment for a job that the media has designated as a hate group for the past uh, minimum four years. And but you got to look at this shift. We're shifting away from this community police policing with local authorities to a government run military. Now stop and frisk is all inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it makes no one safer because the police tactics cannot be used. Searching bags is worse than doing nothing because it appears to do something. It's basically a kabuki of safety. Uh, I, the, the solution would be don't search indiscriminately. Return to profiling and policing. Focus on the situations. Who's there? It's so all of us know this when you're on the subway. The person who's erratic, acting suspicious. It's not hard. That's what policing is for. That's what policemen do. They walk. They know the neighborhood. They see. They, they know this guy's new. This dude's weird. Whatever. National Guard guys are just right. there for frosting. Uh, Jessica, it pains me to say, Greg has a good point. Oh, People were you. against stop and frisk. Now they're all for stop and frisk. Everybody on the subway willy-nilly. Well, actually, they're not. So Kathy Hochul's being widely criticized by liberals for this who are not necessarily saying there's no crime problem, but they're saying we don't want to go back to a time where people were indiscriminately patted down or their bags opened. And yes, I, as the only consistent subway rider on the panel, I can How tell you I that... I use it every day. I did not know that it was every day. And I but eat at Subway. <laughs> Delicious. I don't know why people hate on Subway so much. I think it's really good. Anyway, Dana and I are the only consistent Subway riders on the panel. And I cannot remember a time I was afraid of a person with a bag. Right. Honestly. Like, I, I know that there's a lot of paraphernalia that people who live in the Subway, which is a terrible tragedy, have to have. But it is always a random person that is sticking their face in someone else's face, that is spitting, that is sleeping, whatever it is. And, you know, the NYPD chief of patrol said, great, we'll take whatever help we can get. But that's not a ringing endorsement. Whatever their plan is, that is the plan that I would go with. Because they're the ones that are down there. And I have noticed an enhanced police presence, which I think is a good step in the right direction. 
Um, but I think that this is just going to turn into kind of a post 9-11 nightmare again for people. And New Yorkers really don't want that. They want solutions, but not a return to that. Take us home, Judge. If you want solutions, I think the best thing that you can do is try to examine the history of criminal justice and law enforcement. And it's very clear the way to resolve this is to refund police, get rid of brag, pass a law protecting victims, reverse this cash bail reform, and nothing is going to change, okay? And by the way, close the border. But here's the schizo approach Kathy Hochul has. On the one hand, you know, she, the, she's part of the defund the police. And on the other hand, let's put the military in the subway. And on the one hand, we're going we're gonna to arrest them. We're really going to arrest them. But she's not interested in taking out Alvin Bragg, the prosecutor, and any other prosecutor isn't willing to prosecute crime. And she isn't willing to look at the fact that the only way you're going to keep some of these people in jail is by reversing the cash bail so-called reform, okay? And so she's got this schizo approach because she doesn't know Know what she's doing. And we said on Friday, it took 48 hours for someone to push someone in front of a train. And that young woman, train ran over her feet. She lost one leg above the knee and one leg right below the knee. All right. And this is, she uh -huh. says, from now on, I'm not going to have people uh, uh, on the train who are convicted of assault. You lame person. This guy who pushed his girlfriend was on parole for a violent assault. I'm talking state prison. He just got out, I think, for stabbing his girlfriend. All right. So, you know, stop talking the talk and learn about criminal justice. And by the way, somebody ought to take care of the MTA workers. They face the Jordan Neelys, as you just said, every day. The guy that they know is going to be a problem, and no one is protecting the MTA workers. Yeah, or from the likes of Dana Perino. <laughs> <laughs> should see her on the subway. It's chaos. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.